Making your full-size subjects look miniature is a great way to add a fantastic, surreal effect to your photos and traditionally requires really expensive tilt shift hardware. But fortunately for us, we can get the same effect in Pixelmator Pro without the expensive hardware. And I wanna show you how to do it. Let's jump in. The first thing you'll notice with this tilt shift effect is that it's always shot from above. This really helps sell the small model toy effect. The other thing that you'll notice is that it has a very thin plane of focus. And that's because when you get close on something really small, it's hard for a camera to focus on things that are closer in the distance. And so it has this really tight focus. Now, luckily for us, Pixelmator Pro actually has a really great starting point for this type of effect. So I'm just gonna throw down a new effects layer and I'm going to add the tilt shift effect. And what this does is it gives me all the tools to mimic what a tilt shift lens actually does. And that includes the area of focus and the horizon line of what is in focus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to align the center so that it's on the subject, and then I'm gonna adjust this horizon line so that it doesn't cut through any prominent objects. That's because it really diminishes the effect when it does, and I'm gonna show you later in the video what it looks like when that happens and how to clean up some of it because frankly, it's unavoidable in some cases. Now that I have the effect set up in a way that I like, you're gonna notice one glaring issue, and that is the tower is out of focus when it shouldn't be. In real photography, the tower is more or less the same distance from the camera as the building is, and so it should be in focus. To resolve this, I'm gonna duplicate the base layer twice, and then I'm gonna pull the effects layer down. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can actually isolate the tower, and I'm gonna show you a fancy little trick to do that. Pixelmator Pro actually has a really great tool called Select Subject, and you can use it to isolate the subject on most photos where the subject is prominent and obvious. Now, clicking this isolates the tower and clips out the background, but that's not exactly what I want. I want a mask so that I can then paint it and adjust it later if I need to. So the way that I can do that is command click on this layer to select the visible pixels. And then I'm going to right click on the layer below it and add mask and it will automatically use my selection as the mask. Once that's done, I can just delete the top layer. The result is something that is one step better, but now we have some fringing around the tower and that's because the layer underneath that's still being blurred still has the tower in it and so we're seeing pieces of blurred tower sticking out the edges and that's something that's pretty easy to clean up. We're just gonna use the repair tool for something that it wasn't really meant to be used for. And we're gonna paint out the tower and the result is not something that's convincing on its own. The background looks pretty good, foreground maybe not so much, but when you stack it up with all the other layers, including the blur and the replacement tower, it looks pretty good. From here, there's just one nitpicky little item I wanna clean up, and that's the tree that's in the foreground. It really probably should be more in focus because of how close it is to the camera. So I'm gonna use the quick selection brush and I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna start painting over the tree. And I'm not being too careful about this either because this is really a to taste thing. And so if I get a little bit of the building, I'll clean it up later. This is going to be a non-destructive action. And remember with the quick selection brush, you don't have to do all of this in one action. You can let go of the mouse and then hold shift to start adding more to your selection. And once I have something that I'm pretty happy with, I'm just gonna go ahead and introduce a new effects layer that just adds a little bit of blur over where this tree is. And because I have it selected, it automatically uses that as the mask for the blur layer. Now the initial result is gonna be a little strong, so we can just dial back the gauche and blur a touch. Really what we're trying to do is make it match with the tilt shift layer. And so I'm gonna re-enable that, and we're just gonna toy with both of the blur amounts to try to make it so that they feel pretty seamless together. Once the blur levels are matching, there's just two things to fix. One is a nitpick and one is pretty major. Now the nitpick is just taking our time with the brush and cleaning up our mask. You can see there's a couple spots where a nice soft brush would actually help the effect quite a bit. The other more major issue is you'll notice there's some fringing on the outside. And that's where the invisible or the non-existent pixels on the outside of the image are being blurred into our base layer. So we just need to crop this a little bit. For us, that's fine. We're gonna post this to Instagram and so we can pick one of the presets to make it match an Instagram post. But if you wanna keep this landscape, you can also just dial it in a slight crop to cover up that edge. And now with just a little color grading, we have a finished photo that's ready to post. 
Now, if you would like to see how to get that color grade, make sure you subscribe so you can see my upcoming videos on how to do that. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like below. And if you'd like to see something in Photomator that I haven't done yet, make sure to leave me a comment. Thanks for your support. It really does mean the world to me. I'll catch you on the next one.